Now let's come to the Arundhati Vashisht observation. Let's see this verse. Ya Chaisha Vishruta Rajas Trailokke Sadhu Sammata Arundhati Taya Pesha Vashisht Prashtata Krita. This is verse 31 from chapter 2. Is this verse a Nimitta or not? Let's look at the context of this verse a bit later. But before we do that, does the Mahabharata explicitly say the word Nimitta prior to the AV verse in the same chapter? Iha Yudde Maharaja Bhavishyati Mahankshaya Yathemani Nimittani Bhayaya Dyopalakshase This is verse 16 from chapter 2. It says Nimitta and this is an astrological term so therefore Karl Popper's work is actually not applicable to the verses which follow including the Arundhati Vashishta observation because they are all Nimittas and astrological in nature. Let's forget that for a moment and see whether the AV observation is actually a falsifier as per Karl Popper. So the problem is that if a statement qualifies as a falsifier under Karl Popper's theory, then it has to be accepted as a consensus by the scientific community according to Popper himself. And if the community itself cannot reach a consensus unto what would qualify as a falsifier for the disputed statement, then the statement itself, despite initial appearances, may not actually be empirical or scientific in the relevant sense. This is from Basic Sentences in the Role of Convention by Karl Popper himself. I'm quoting ad verbatim. The problem is that only P. V. Vartak accepts this as an astronomy observation and uh, Shri Yok, but this is rejected by everybody else. So how could it qualify as a falsifier? And of course, it's an astrological limiter which we already pointed out. This is a no-no for Karl Popper. Now, the other problem which the AV observation runs into is that the basic statement, as per Karl Popper, has to be intersubjectively acceptable. The problem here is that only Vyasa subjectively reports this as an astronomy observation. In fact, Bhishma a few days later on the bed of arrows says that he remembers Arundhati and compares Sandali to that same elevated region and a Pativrata where she belongs. Arundhati twa narena swargaloke mahiyate. So the AV observation fails this test of Karl Popper also and cannot qualify as a falsifier. Now, what about earlier in the Mahabharata? So the issue here is that Kunti also blesses Draupadi to be like Arundhati much earlier in the text. Yatha Vaishravane Bhadra Vashishte Chapya Arundhati Yatha Narayane Lakshmi Statha Tvam Bhava Bhartushu And that's from the Adi Parva. So again we see that after the Arundhati Vashishta observation verse, uh, when Bhishma is on the bed of arrows, uh, you've already seen that uh, he is saying that Arundhati is very much definitely a Pativrata. And when you take it back uh, to previously uh, in the Mahabharata, then Kunti also is saying, well, Arundhati is definitely a Pativrata. So the, the issue what we have over here, the AV observation fails this test of Karl Popper. It cannot therefore qualify as a falsifier. Now, what about geography? If we see Alcor, Arundhati and Mizar, Vashishta are circumpolar, between 7500 BC and 800 BCE. And circumpolarity depends on declination, uh, which is celestial latitude, but also the geocentric latitude of the observer. And the problem is that the binary star, which is circumpolar in 5561 BCE at Delhi, is not circumpolar at Bengaluru. And therefore, the binary stars rise and set in Bangalore. And let's see what happens over here. So this leads to a very interesting problem. So Alcor or Arundhati rises earlier. Alcor or Arundhati goes to bed later than Vashishta. Arundhati has not left Vashishta behind. She remains a Pativrata. And therefore, what was observed in the Mahabharata times, we can confirm was only momentary. It must have been a Nimitta. In any case, it's explicitly mentioned as a Nimitta. So therefore, the issue is that between the geographical boundaries, this particular uh, observation is true in Bangalore, but not in Delhi. Uh, so th therein lies another problem for uh, the uh, hypothesis. If anybody has a hypothesis where they say it is universal, well, it is not universal because it is 
It is. It can only be uh, happening in Delhi and in Bangalore. Actually, uh, the reverse is the case. Now, what's the context of the AV verses before? These verses are very interesting. From 26 onwards, you can see that the idols of the deities are trembling, smiling, vomiting blood. They sweat. They fall down. Then, the, without being beaten, the drums are giving sounds. Uh, the you know beautiful birds are uttering very cruel cries, and uh, then in fact uh, dawn and sunrise swarms of locusts by the hundreds are seen, and then the dawn and dusk are glowing accompanied by a burning of the four directions, and there's a rain of blood and uh, rain of bones. How long are these things going on for? Are these things going on for days, months, years, or centuries? And we can see over here that they may be going on for days or maybe a month or maybe slightly longer, but definitely not much longer than that. So therefore, the context of the verses is also saying that these verses must be a nimitta only. So the problem is the Arundhati Vashishta observation is only a nimitta and a nimitta which by Karl Popper's words, his own words, cannot be a falsifier. Uh, thanks for watching and then my next video We'll go on to the other possibilities of the meanings for the verse of Prishthata Kritaha.